Guys, I just made this video, but my mic was muted. I'm in a really bad mood. But what might cheer me up and you guys up is by looking at that offer on our website for Valentine's Day, mate. We've got 50% off. Guys, if you want to get access to the best challenger players and coaches, well, the content we make, then all you have to do is click on one of those links in the description and comment section to GameLeap.com and froth it. Like, your LP will not be the only thing going up this Valentine's Day. Trust me, and what's up, by the way? This is Eags, otherwise known as the Jizz in these parts. And, um, yeah, let's get into the countdown. Why not? Now, coming in at number 10, we have Alawi. I've already talked about these champions, you can probably tell. But anyway, yeah, Alawi. So we talked about in yesterday's video of the underrated champions. Alawi is really here because of the Black Cleaver buff, yeah, recently. Now, not only does she do very well into it, well, just lots of champions, but also lots of players in the majority of ELOs, because players are just going to help about you, yeah? They're just going to play in a very linear play style. They don't know how to move laterally. So Alawi, because of your E and your tentacles, you're going to shred them. And yeah, the Black Cleaver buff, more attack damage, more HP, makes you unreal. And it's actually become the rushing item for Alawi now. So first item, Black Cleaver. Follow this with a Frostfire Gauntlet. And after this, you can go anything. Hold Breaker if you're just going to Split Push. You can go Stair Gauge into Gargoyle's Stone Plate. That makes the shield incredibly big. Or you can go for something like Spirit Fissage, right? If they have a bunch of magic damage. It just depends, guys, on who you're against. But yeah, Elawi is the first champion to talk about. And also, if you enter a really free lane, take Demolish. You'll get their towers so quickly. Now, number nine on the countdown. This is one of the scariest top laners because in terms of matchups, like Olaf doesn't really have many losing ones. Okay, like you might see a Vayne once in a while. But apart from that, like you should be kind of chilling. And Olaf is really here, not because of any changes maybe recently, I should say. It's really because last season, right? Because of all the changes right as she gave to Olaf himself, these direct changes, they made him better for top lane, but worse in the jungle. And because of the teleport change from last season where they made it worse in the early game for top laners, especially when you're running two combat summoner spells as a champion. So Olaf, for example, with Flash and Ghost makes you even deadlier during the laning phase. I should probably also mention here that if you're going something like Death Stance, more attack damage from the item, even though you're not getting ability haste anymore, more attack damage is just good for you. And as far as your mythic item goes, you have a bunch of options, right? You can go for something like Stride Breaker if you feel as if you need the stickiness to stick to the enemy champions, especially if they're ranged champions. You can go something like Gore Drinker. You, you can go something like Jack Show even. If you're really fed out of the early game, you can get an early tier man into Ravenous Hydra and start stacking this quickly. You will be unstoppable. So a bunch of options here for Olaf. Black Cleaver is another one, especially if you're into a bunch of tanky champions. So he's number nine. Now moving on to number eight, speaking of tanky champions, probably one of the few blind pick champions you can pick in the top lane at the moment. This is Orn, especially guys if you have damage across the rest of your team. So if you have like a Graves, Kindred Jungle, a Leash Jungle, something like this, right? You have a mid laner who's very high damage, like a Yasuo or whatever, and you have a bot lane who's got good DPS. Orn is just unreal because you become like the backbone of your team, right? And because of the recent changes to Jack Show, where it's actually like just scaling off more bonus magic resistant bonus armor, that's what you're building. Like after Jack Show, right? So you'll be able to make use of this because you are a pure tank. And also what's happening next patch if you're going Radiant Virtue Orn is a Radiant Virtue, even though it's going to be 3200 gold and you're losing the ability haste and the healing from the actual passes. But what you are getting is more scaling based on your max HP. So this is just better for your pure tanky champions who are actually building tanky items, right? Orn is one of them because you're going to have so much HP, especially in the late game. This might even open up builds with like Anathema's Chains because that gives you 800 HP, Warmogs as well, right? It's going to be super interesting what happens. But yeah, Orn as well is benefiting from the Grievous Wounds buffs where they're 40% effective with just a Bramble Vest. So he's number eight in this countdown. You probably want to ban a champion like Fiora though because yeah, she'll just outscale you and 1v9 the game. Now, speaking of a champion who will outscale Orn and just do really well in the split push and potentially 1v9, it's kind of like the budget for Fiora in a way. This is Camille. And the build, exactly like Fiora's, right? Divine Sundra, Ravenous Hydra, Death Stance. Yes, Death Stance, you're not getting ability haste now, but you're getting 40 ability haste from Divine Sundra and Ravenous Hydra. So you don't really have to worry about that, right? That box is already checked. And for Camille, if you're running something like Shield Bash to enhance your passive, if you're running Bone Plating into Bursty Champions, so maybe something like a Jax or a Darius, run Second Wind into Champions who have a lot of poke, right? GP, Jace these type of champions. So that's kind of like an important distinction to make as far as your runes go. You can run something like Ignite with TP. You can run Flash with TP. Just depends on like who the enemy top laner is. Ignite might be better against like actual innate healing champions. So something like a Darius, for example, GP as well. Flash would probably just be better against champions who have gap closing and just important CC. So Camille, I'd highly recommend just having her in your champion pool as a counter pick, but yes, she has to be included in this countdown. Now speaking about a top laner who's one of the best counter picks in the game, this is Vayne. Now I know the Vayne, you know, Probably most of the time you're going to see her in the bot lane, but that's the great thing about actually picking your own champ select. People won't think you're going top, so they'll actually counter pick themselves for you. And because of the recent changes to Blade of the Rune King, yes, okay, lots of the item kind of got hit, but you're getting more on hit damage for being a ranged champion. This means that just getting this item right against these top laners, you're going to shred them. I'd highly recommend picking Vayne though, guys, when you know the enemy top laner is going to have a lot of HP, because then you can really make use of Blade of the Rune King. If not, you can probably just play someone else in the top lane, right? And I know that it says here that Vayne doesn't have the best win rate in the world, 
but this is in platinum and above in Korea, right? Like these players probably aren't going to get the most out of the champion. And let's be real as well. If you play against a vein in the top lane, you're going to be hella frustrated because it's just way too difficult to kill the champion and you're probably going to get snowballed on. Now, starting off the top five in the countdown, one of the few blind picks we have, this is Gangplank. Now guys, honestly, like if you seriously want to climb on League of Legends, like GP is just a must have in your champion pool. He's like relevant every single season. And because of the recent changes to Essence Reaver and Navori Quick Blades, which were just like straight up bust for GP, Essence Reaver more attack damage, even though it's costing an extra 100 gold, who cares? And Navori Quick Blades, the passive proking off 40% crit. This is just huge for GP, right? Important to note here that if you're taking first strike, please take biscuits. Otherwise you will go oom, okay? Lots of GPs as well at the moment are starting D shield into health pots. You don't have corrupting in the mana from that. That's important. If you're taking grass, then for your secondary tree, you want to be taking biscuits, okay? So biscuits in both cases, especially if you're starting D shield. And yeah, you want to be taking first strike into free lanes. Like lanes you know 100%, I'm going to win no matter what. You can take Grasp into lanes, which might be a little bit more difficult. So even stuff like Orn can be difficult for GP during the laning phase. Trindamir might be difficult. A champion like Jace, it's pretty even to go against, right? So those are the champions you're thinking about taking Grasp against. But yeah, innately speaking, GP is incredibly powerful. And even in Platinum and above in Korea, you can see the win rate is above 51%. And these people won't know how to actually make use of the champion or full use of it like challengers would. So that really just goes to show how OP GP is. Now, moving on to number four, this is a champion who hopefully I don't have to talk too much about. This is Darren. Because just like maybe, I don't know, who else has been on this countdown? Like Camille? They've been on these countdowns for ages, bro. Like every single patch I'm talking about them. Darius, W being on five seconds, you know, lots of champions in the top lane having HP and, you know, extended fighting, I guess, with Conqueror, double combat summoner spells like I talked about for Olaf, right? The teleport nerf from last season. It's just so good for Darius right now. Even Steris Gage, you know, because they buffed it like a few patches ago. You can think about going this. You can go Stride Breaker. You can go Trinity Force if you're snowballing. Really depends, right? You got a bunch of build options. And yeah, Darius, the ultimate punishing champion. If the enemy player makes a mistake, you punish them, you kill them, planes over GG. And yeah, he's one of the most banned champions as well for a good reason. So he is number four. Now, moving on to number three, starting off the top three, we have Fiora. And I honestly think, guys, if we did a poll, like who the most AIDS top laner to play against is, Fiora's going to be number one, like 100%. This champion is the most banned top laner still, despite getting nerfs, like from last patch or two patches ago, whatever it was, where they nerfed your vital damage from your passive and also your Q's damage, the scaling off your attack damage. Who cares? Like, Fiora is so annoying to play against during the laning phase. With Grass the Undying, proking off her lunge, and then the vital damage if she manages to hit this, get me out. With Mana Flow banned as well, it gives you enough sustain right in terms of your mana and then scorch it just gives you so much tick damage like after a while you're going to out sustain pretty much anyone and the damage you deal is legit as well and just like I mentioned for Camille, right, the build is exactly the same. Divine Sundra, Ravenous Hydra, into Death Stance. Yes, you're losing ability heads from the D squared, but you are getting more attack damage. And guess what? Everything scales off of that pretty much for Fiora. So unreal build at the moment. She's probably even better because of the changes. And yeah, she's number three. And also you can blind pick her, which is important to note. Now, number two on the countdown. This is, well, probably the most blind pickable top planer. So again, guys, blind picks top. They're just huge to have in your pool, right? This is Jace. Yes, he might be difficult to pilot. So if you do want to master this champion, check out the game we website we have all the courses and guides on how to actually pilot this champion like korean challenges and yeah for jace because of the eclipse buff from last patch where they actually gave it ability haze which is better than the omni vamp for jace you care a lot more about having more cooldowns than actually like just healing off your abilities and your auto attacks and the buster jace as well right where they buffed your q's damage your w's damage like it's all too much to deal with yes his win rate it might not reflect how op it is and guess what it won't because if you make one mistake on this champion you are punishable but if you don't if you play this guy like t1's ass you are one of the strongest tops and that's why he's number two i'm sure we we can all agree that when you see Jace on the enemy team, you just don't know what to do against him if they're a good Jace player. But the number one champion, guys, honestly, like as a champion that Jace absolutely dominates. But yeah, innately speaking, like this is the most broken top laner, like hands down, this is Jax. And I've been like Darius and maybe Camille, right? Jax has been on these countdowns for ages. And do I really have to talk about this? Like whether you're going to find Sundra, Blade, the Rune King, get his on, you just get a death cap. I don't care what you get, what items you build, bro. Just pick Jax. That's all you have to do. Okay, you probably should think about your build a bit more and whether you want to take Lethal Tempo or Grass the Undying as your keystone. And as far as your abilities go, you want to still be maxing your W into your E into your Q. And yeah, maybe I should mention that when you hit level six, your auto attack. So the empowered ones, they're proccing every two auto attacks, not every three auto attacks. So your level six spike is huge. Your DPS is going to be higher. And yeah, Jax is just unbeatable. Just make sure you ban Jace if you want to pick this champion. And those were the best top laners, guys, for 13.3. Any questions, any thoughts, leave them in the comment section down below. Please like the video if you did enjoy it. And until next season 13 upload, this has been X. Peace.